So you'll notice the mixer brush has a lot of different controls up here in the options bar. It may seem a little intimidating to those of you who've never used this tool before, but you need to understand that these settings aren't something that you'll have to fuss with as you paint. You really only need to concern yourself with these when you're initially setting up your brushes. And hopefully you'll see once we've taken a look at these that they're fairly easy to adjust to create a variety of different painting behaviors. So what is the mixer brush? Let's start there. Well, it's a fairly new painting tool introduced with CS5 that allows the mixing of uh, brush color, referred to as the reservoir well, uh, with canvas color, referred to as the pickup well. I prefer to just refer to them as brush color and canvas color. And it's this mixing and blending of colors that gives work created using the mixer brush uh, the look of paintings made using traditional media. I really enjoy the way this tool works and looks, and hopefully through this tutorial I can pass some of that enjoyment along to you. So as we begin to try to understand what this tool is and what it can do, let's first take a look at uh, these controls right here. Wet, Load, Mix, and Flow. We'll start with this uh, wet setting. And simply stated, this uh, determines how wet or how dry the paint on the canvas is. If it's set to zero, like it is now, all of the canvas colors are dry. So if we add paint to the canvas, it's not going to blend in any way with the colors that are already on the canvas. But if we have a value of anything other than zero in this field, the brush color is now going to mix with the canvas color. So the yellow-orange that I have on my brush is now mixing with the background white and uh, all the other colors we see here. And really, whether the setting is set to 100% or 1%, the result is going to be about the same. This particular control works more like an on-off switch than a variable level uh, slider. Let's take a look at this load setting now. This basically determines how much paint is loaded on your brush. If we move this all the way down to 1%, you'll see that the uh, brush color quickly fades away. But if we move this to 100%, we now have a never-ending supply of paint on our brush. And settings between 1 and 100 will assign various load amounts uh, to your brush. For the brushes I make, I usually just leave this in the middle. This mix setting will determine the ratio of canvas color to brush color in your brush strokes. As you can see, this field is currently grayed out because there's no mixing of colors as we saw in the dry mode. So we'll need to set the wetness of the canvas color to anything other than zero. And with a mix of 100%, like we see here, it's the canvas color that dominates our brush stroke. We're not really seeing any of this yellow-orange brush color at all. But if we take this down to zero, you'll see that uh, now it's the brush color that dominates the stroke. And then the various settings between uh, 0 and 100 will provide different ratios of canvas color to brush color. Just remember, the higher percentages will favor the canvas colors, and the lower percentages will favor the uh, brush color. Looking at this flow setting now, this is just going to determine the rate at which a brush is able to transfer its color to the canvas. A setting of 100 will produce an opaque brush stroke. In a lower setting, we'll produce a more transparent stroke. And because we have a texture pattern assigned to this brush, we're seeing a little bit more of that texture. It's sort of like painting with a traditional brush that has very little paint on it. The paint doesn't quite make it down into the little grooves of the textured surface. Typically, I like to leave this at 100% when I'm setting up my brushes. And if you like, you can try some of the preset combinations of wetness, load, and mix that uh, Photoshop has provided. I prefer to set up my own combinations and save them as tool presets, and that would be my recommendation for you as well. And with the sample all layers, if this is on, we'll be sampling all the visible pixel information on all layers and painting using that visible information as though we were working on a single layer document. You need to be aware, though, that the more layers you're sampling, uh, the more of a load it's going to be on your computer's processor. With this off, we're only going to be uh, sampling and working with the information on the current layer that we have selected. 
And like I said, all the brushes we'll be using here are set to sample only the current layer and not all layers. Now let's take a look at these two controls right here, the uh, auto load and auto clean buttons. When this button on the left is on, like it is now, and which it is by default, your brush will automatically reload after each brush stroke. So you can make a stroke and then continue to make strokes without having to reload your brush. With this auto load off, uh, you'll see the color square is now empty. We can manually reload for a single stroke by clicking this downward arrow and then clicking load brush. But after a single stroke, you can see that our color square is once again uh, empty. And as long as you have a wet value of more than one, you can use uh, your brush as a clean blending brush that won't uh, add any paint to the canvas, but does have the ability uh, to blend together and paint uh, all the colors on the canvas. Now with the Auto Clean button on, as it is now and as it is by default, your brush will automatically be cleaned after every stroke. So we can blend our canvas colors, pick our brush up and make another brush stroke, but since our brush was automatically cleaned, there won't be any paint on the brush. But if you turn this Auto Clean off and you paint over your canvas in the same way, your brush won't be clean as you make your next stroke because it still had on it the paint that was picked up from the canvas during the previous stroke. And in the same way, when you make another brush stroke, the white that we just picked up from uh, the background will still be on the brush. And if you look closely at your color square, you'll see a representation of the paint that was picked up from the canvas. So a brush configured in this way is what we would call a dirty blending brush. And if at any point while you're working with a dirty brush you want to manually clean it, you can just click Clean Brush next to the color square, and for one stroke your brush will be clean. And then it becomes a dirty brush again after that initial stroke. Now if you leave Auto Clean off and turn on Auto Load, let me actually bring my mix setting down a bit. Then we can paint with whatever paint color we have in the paint square along with uh, the paint that we pick up from our canvas. And to make these features like Load Brush, Clean Brush, Auto Load, and Auto Clean easier to work with, Photoshop gives us the opportunity to assign keyboard shortcuts. Let's take a look at that now in the uh, Keyboard Shortcuts dialog box, which we can open here in the Edit menu. We'll go to Tools, and we'll scroll down. And here you'll see Load Mixer Brush, Clean Mixer Brush, Toggle Mixer Brush Auto Load, and Toggle Mixer Brush Auto Clean. By default, these won't have keyboard shortcuts assigned to them, but what I've done is to assign the comma, the period, and the less than and greater than keys. By default, these shortcuts were assigned to these four commands, which I've never used. And then, to make these shortcuts even easier to use, I've programmed these into my Tablet Express keys. Let's take a look at that. So as I showed you in the last chapter, these bottom four keys have been assigned these four mixer brush commands. And I've just assigned the keystrokes comma, period, less than, and greater than. One other options bar setting I want to show you real quick is this load solid colors only. With it checked like it is now, whatever color you select uh, as you option or alt click your canvas, will be the single color that will appear in your color square and the single color you'll apply with your brush. But if you turn this off by clicking on it, then you'll be able to load and paint with multiple colors. So that's the Mixer Brush Options Bar. And again, you'll very rarely if ever see me adjust any of these settings as I work, or anything in the brush panel for that matter. All of these settings are things that I'll play around with as I'm setting up my brushes, but not as I'm actually painting.